Gather round, kids. I'm about to tell you a story. I'm Dane Reed, the voiceover guy. 15 years in voiceover. And I'm about to tell you how I got started. Check me out. So doing voiceover actually got started in 2004, September in 2004. But there was an origin story to it. Back in 1998-99, my college professor, Bill Clark, who was my mass media arts teacher in many different classes over at Clark Atlanta University, suggested to me that I had the kind of voice for voiceover. If that sounds familiar, you know why, right? So I looked around to try to get into voiceover very briefly, and I got nothing. Back in those days, the internet wasn't as, as advanced as it is now, and so it was hard to find information on anything. So I gave it up, but it was always in my mind. It was always in my heart that I wanted to do voiceover. Fast forward to 2004, I'm in New Orleans, and I'm just thinking about it. I had been listening to radio commercials of radio imaging guys and local commercials and stuff. And I would mimic the voices on those radio stations and those commercials. And I was like, I want to do this. I can do this. And so I'm in a hotel room in New Orleans thinking about it when I get a call from one of my buddies. And for me, this was confirmation. So immediately when I got back to Atlanta, I started scouring the much more developed internet to find information about voiceover. And I came across a local voiceover talent here in Atlanta who I called, left a message for, and who called me back within minutes. She advised me that if I wanted to get into voiceover, that I needed to do a demo. Now, this isn't an advice that I would give to anybody else in 2019 or whatever year you're watching this, but, you know, that's exactly what I do. And she did, and she recommended a voiceover studio that could do the demo for me right here in Atlanta. I called them up. I trolled them a little bit, you know, with my New York accent. Yeah, you know, I want to do this demo. And I kept that going until the day, until the moment that I started actually recording. And when I did, they were like stunned that, um, that I could you know, change my voice or change my accent, you know, code switch the way that I did. And they loved the work that I did as a demo so much that they actually gave me my demo free. It was the first time for them in hundreds of voiceover demos that they had done that they thought that the talent actually had talent um, and actually had a future. And so I started shopping my demo around from then to um, production houses and anybody that wanted to listen finally landed a job that paid me $75 to be a robot in a local commercial um, that was produced here in Atlanta. $75, that was a big deal. Later on that year, my then girlfriend bought me a Rode NT1A, but I had nothing to plug it into. It was my Christmas gift from her. And so I had to buy my other part of the Christmas gift, which was an Emu 1616, which came with Cubase LE. So I had that Emu 1616 until about 2016, 2017, when I finally got the Apollo Twin. I also had um, Cubase LE and which made me switch to Nuendo, which made me switch back to Cubase. And I've been a Cubase, Nuendo, Steinberg guy my entire career. Right now, I'm up to 9.5. In 2015, after I got the Rode NT1A and I got everything that I needed, I found my first regular client who paid me $200 a week to produce commercials for him. Over time, I took the $200 and I purchased this. And let me show it to you guys. I haven't used it for a couple of years, but believe me, I'll never sell it. This is my Neumann TLM 103. This microphone I used up to about three years ago consistently. 
Um, now you guys see me in the studio. I have a Sennheiser 416. Um, I have a Rode NTG uh, 3. I have a bunch of mics now, but that microphone there was the microphone that got me through most of my career. I recorded thousands, literally thousands of voiceovers with that microphone right there. Um, and I and I love it. In 2005, I also started to develop uh, ringtones because ringtones were real hot. So I started my um, own ringtones and I named them originally DRM ringtones, but I broke them off into what I call mytalktones.com and BibleverseRingtones.com, which I had a ton of each. I also started writing my audiobook, Dana the Procrastinator. It was loosely based on my life of procrastinating. In fact, getting started on doing voiceover, I procrastinated from the time that I was told about it in 2008 or 9 until I actually started in 2004. And it was an audiobook. And I completed the book in 2008, around the same time that I actually completed my ringtone website. I spent a ton of money on the ringtone website, and I made $6 back. But Dana the Procrastinator for about a year was a huge success. In 2006, let me rewind, I also stopped working for the Fulton County School System here in Atlanta and I went full time at doing voiceover. It was rough, I'm telling you. It was very rough, but I believed in what I wanted to do, so I kept on doing it. Um, I loved voiceover, whether or not it put money in my pocket. And I struggled, I struggled, I struggled in 2008. Dana the Procrastinator and my ability to do public speaking workshops uh, because I had worked in the school previously. I knew people here in Georgia and my dad had worked with the New York City school system forever. And so he knew a bunch of people in the New York City school system. So between here and New York, I went back and forth to schools, uh, to bookstores and worked with teachers and showed off Dana the Procrastinator, something that I was incredibly proud about. But by the end of 2009, Dana the Procrastinator just wasn't paying. And so I had to be an adult and see what was paying. Voiceover was my ticket. And what I realized at that point was that I have an ability to network. And even though I'm an introvert, people tend to think that I'm an extrovert. And so I went out, started here in Metro Atlanta, every event that I can go to, telling people that I'm a voiceover person, telling people uh, that I can produce their commercials, if even necessary selling to mom and pop shops here in Metro Atlanta. And then I expanded to Georgia, expanded to the Southeast, expanded a little bit up North and a little bit out West. And my voice became basically nationwide. And I started doing more local commercials for people in different markets. And radio salespeople started to get to know me. And so they would send me uh, work as well. Fast forward a couple of years to 2014 was a moment that I was extremely proud of. Throughout my career, I had done a lot of work for radio stations, but the one that I was very proud of was landing the imaging job for WCLK, which was the station that represented Clark Atlanta University with jazz and with pride. But it was the station that Bill Clark had been the program director for at one time. Bill Clark actually passed away before I became the radio imaging person for that particular station. But my career 
is largely in part to the fact that he first said something while I was walking out of his class. And sometimes you need someone to inspire you, to push you, to give you ideas. And he gave me that initial idea. Certainly, I owe a lot of credit to a lot of other people. My brother, who was an audio engineer, who helped me produce uh, Dana the Procrastinator's audio book side of it. Um, my dude, Postman, who helped me learn how to produce radio commercials. All of the people who inspired me in, in radio imaging, uh, who I listened to. I mean, there are so many people who uh, helped me in voiceover that I couldn't even begin to name them. So I won't name any more, but I, I want to thank you guys because 15 years later, I am doing what I love. A lot of people know me for traveling, but what they don't know is that while voiceover is the thing that has helped me travel the world, the world is the thing that has made me a better voiceover talent. What I have learned, what I have seen, it has added to my spirit. I wouldn't recommend anybody just going out there and recording a voiceover demo and starting your career like that. It just doesn't work like that in 2019. And I'm not even sure that in 2004 it worked like that. But I will say, that if you really believe that you have the talent to have a 15, 20, 25 year career in voiceover or anything, get started, educate yourself, learn as much as possible, mimic the commercials and the voiceovers that you hear online and on radio and anywhere else that you hear it. Believe in yourself and do it. I did. I'm Dane Reed, the voiceover guy. Check out my blog, subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube page, find me on LinkedIn, hit me up, send me a message if you want to do, um, if you want me to do some voiceovers for you. Now, if you just want me to sit there and give you advice, check out my page and there's plenty of advice there. All right. I'm Dane Reed, the voiceover guy, and I'm gone. Wait, I'm not gone because I'm still going to be doing voiceover. But for this video, I'm gone. Peace.